Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and today we're talking about the Baby Lock Soprano. In this video, we're going to talk about doing uh, basic operations of your machine. Now, to start out with, you have lots of different stitches you can do up here. These are your utility stitches. Now, in your manual on page B44 and following, it talks about the different stitches and what they're good for. So this is a really handy reference to look through so that you know um, how to get good capability out of your machine. Okay, so to start out with, you probably want to be able to sew just a straight stitch, a regular 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, your machine by default is going to have the left needle position as opposed to the right or the center needle position, as the left needle position. Now, how do we get a 5 8 inch seam allowance? What lines do we use? Well, back here, there is a mark that says 5 8 inch, and then there's a, a answering mark right here on the gray plastic part. If you line those up, it's going to give you your 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to go needle down. I've got this on 5 8 inch. There we go. That's 5 8 of an inch. Okay, so, but what if you're doing center needle position? Now you've got four different um, straight stitches here. I'm going to tell you in a, a bit what that's for, but to start out with one or three. So we we'll, we'll go with three. <clears throat> okay, there we go, three. Now you notice it's on center needle position. So if I use those same lines, it wouldn't give me a 5 8 inch seam allowance. It'd be something less. So in this case, we're going to use this little mark right here on the bobbin cover. And that's going to give you your 5 8 inch seam allowance right there. There we go, 5 8 inch. Okay, now notice I'm using this button rather than using the hand wheel. This is a really convenient way to lower and raise your needle. Okay, so to start out with, I'm going to start out with this one right here. By the way, you can turn on in settings your default for having either the center needle position or the left needle position. That's why we have these two different buttons here, the one and the three. The two and the four have to do with um, how it begins when you're using the locking stitch feature. But we're going to start out with this, okay? So when you want to do a back stitch, I'll slow it down here a little bit. Okay, back stitch button is right here. So when you start sewing, you can do a back stitch by pressing that down as long as you press it down, it's going to do a back stitch. And at the end of your seam, do a back stitch. There we go. And notice it stops with needle down. Again, you can change that in your settings, but it may be convenient so you can take a peek at your stitches, keep stitching, and you haven't lost your place. So once you're done sewing, if you push the thread cutter button, it cuts the thread and lifts up the needle. You can also cut your thread by, okay, done sewing, just push needle up, and you've got a th side thread cutter right here on the side of the machine. Of course, you always have your scissors, you can do that too. So there's different ways that you can cut your thread. I kind of like this one here because it cuts the threads, pulls them to the back of the fabric, and makes it so I just have to trim those little stitches, those little uh, threads right there, and it makes it very convenient to use the thread cutter button. Now, let's say we wanted to build in that back stitch automatically. That's pushing this button right here. Now, with this stitch number one, right there, if you look carefully, it has like a back stitch. Okay, so watch what it does. See, notice I didn't have to push that button at all. When I'm done, take my foot off the pedal, push this button, it stitches back three stitches, forward three stitches, and stops. And this is a real accurate way of putting your back stitches in the beginning and ending of your seam. Here you can see I was a little bit off. Here it was very accurate. So this button works really well so that I'm not having to guess as to how long to push that. I can do that, but this is gonna be a shortcut. Really nice feature. Now this one, watch what happens. We're gonna start out. 
Sewing forward, sewing back, go forward. I go to where I want to stop. All I've got to do is push this button, does its back stitch, stitches forward right to where I stopped before, and cuts the thread. That's what having that does. And so I didn't have to push this button at all. Now, what about raising and lowering the presser foot? We have a button that raises or lowers the presser foot right here. Also, I have my knee lifter, right, like that. So if my presser foot's already up, I can push the knee lifter like this. Now, in case you can't see, the knee lifter is this little bar here. It's one of your accessories, and it comes on, uh, in a bracket underneath your uh, extension table. That's where it is. Let me put that back in there. But I really like this feature here because it's a very hands-free feature. I can just push it with my knee to make it go up or down. Now, this button here is another way to lift your presser foot as well as your lever back here. If I push this so that the presser foot's up, now the lever is not going to work. So in case that happens to you, you've got two options. You can either push this again, then you can use this manually, or you can also use your knee lifter to make the presser foot go down. And that makes it so that you can use the lever manually. So you've got a couple different options. I really recommend that you try using the knee lifter because it's a really convenient way. And you can tell it's one of my favorites. Okay, so this one here is a pivot feature. I'm gonna show you. When I sew and I stop, when I stop sewing, notice the presser foot lifts up just a little bit and it pivots so I can turn corners. So I'm going to start sewing again. I don't even have to put the presser foot down. Just put my foot back down on the pedal. I can turn a corner, keep sewing, turn a corner again, keep sewing. And then I'm going to see if I can make a nice little rectangle. Keep sewing. I'm going to just get slow right there. Push that button there, do my little back stitch. Go forward, cuts my thread, and it lifts the foot. That's what this is about. So once I've done doing my automatic back stitch, it lifts the foot. So this has two features. It, it uh, makes it so it pivots and it also lifts the foot once you've done an automatic back stitch. Now I kind of miss, missed it up a little bit, but you can see it makes turning corners really convenient when you use this feature. Now you can turn any of these off, but this one here is only going to be on when your automatic um, back stitch or locking stitch is on. So if I turn that off, both of those go off. Now what do I mean by locking stitch? So I'm going to go to stitch number two, which is the same needle position, and by the way, with all four of these, one through four, you can change your needle position, you can change your stitch length, and you can change your thread tension. Now thread tension, instead of having a dial here, thread tension is how tightly it allows, tightly or loosely allows your thread to go through. So if you need to balance your tension, this is where you would do that, right there. You don't have to get into settings. Okay, so again, notice I can't put that down. Plus, I'm using my knee lifter, that works great. Now watch carefully. I've got it on locking stitch to start with. Watch what it does. It makes a little knot to begin with, and then stitching along where I want it to stop, push this here, and I don't even have my foot on the pedal. It just does the locking stitch right there. Now I didn't do the automatic cut. Um, I just wanted to show you that one feature there. Okay. So the locking stitch puts this little knot in the back, and it's a very clean looking way of finishing your seam. Now this here is a little stronger and secure, more secure, but on some applications, that's all you want. You want to just have a nice clean ending to your seam, um, maybe like top stitching or whatever, where you don't have a lot of extra thread from back stitching. So that's why you have two and four. Four is just sim simply center needle position, but the same thing I just showed you. So, um, let's see here, let's go back to here, there we go. Um, 
So th number stitch number one is going to be your default for stitching. Um, that's how you start out with that. That's your basic sewing. So there's lots of other things you can do. Of course, you can do zigzag and um, overcasting, all kinds of things with this machine. But to get started, I hope I've given you a good start on this machine. If I have, give me a thumbs up today. And there are lots of other videos on this machine. I invite you to watch them all. We have other videos on other machines also on our YouTube website. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.